Good morning and welcome. This is Pastor Lucy Painter with your daily insights. And today we continue with our topic, the prayer closet. And we said that we need to look at what happens in the prayer closet. What can hinder a breakthrough in the prayer closet? What can hinder that sweet presence, that intimate fellowship that we all know is experienced in the prayer closet. And for Monday, we have been talking about the unconfessed sin. And we talked about the cause of the unconfessed sin. We said one of the cause is acceptance of sin. And this is the kind of sin you don't just find yourself falling into it. You accept it. You regard it, you accept it. And yesterday we talked about agreeing with the sin. So in a way, you are so comfortable with it that you don't find the need of confessing that sin. So today we want to check and something else. We want to check the condition of that unconfessed sin. What is the condition of that unconfessed sin? How does it look? You know, the Bible says, and our text will continue being from the book of Psalms, uh, chapter 66, from verse 16 to 20. And today, allow me to read from NIV version. Because I was reading again and again. You know, the word of God is new every morning and every time. So I was reading again and again. And today, I checked the NIV version. And I found another interesting word. So listen to me read it. Come and hear all you who fear God. Let me tell you what he has done for me. So David is talking and telling us what the Lord has done for him. I cried out to him with my mouth. His praise was on my tongue. And then here is it. Listen to it. If I had cherished sin in my heart. So Monday and Tuesday, I was talking about regard. Listen to NIV. It has given us another word, cherished. You know, it's like you're so excited. You love it. You're gazing upon it. You're astonished. You're amazed. So David says, if I had cherished sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. But God has surely listened and has heard my prayer. Praise be to God who has not rejected my prayer or withheld his love from me. So, now I want to talk about the condition of the unconfessed sin. David moves now from the cause of the unconfessed sin to the condition of this unconfessed sin. And he shows us that it is this condition is always involving two things. And I want us to talk about this. In this text, he uses a small yet a powerful pronoun. And this pronoun is my. David shows us that this condition of unconfessed sin always involves a single person. And thus we see that if unconfessed sin is present, then the fault, the guilt, and the blame lies nowhere else but within that person. It comes home to you and I, and it involves a single person. I want to emphasize on this because he says, if I had cherished sin in my, my, not in somebody else, in my heart, my heart. And when it comes to sin, this unconfessed sin, if there is something that the enemy wants us to do is to blame others for my sin, my shortcomings, my mistakes. We always want to blame somebody. And this is what happens at the Garden of Eden. You know, the Bible says that God came as usual in the cool of the day to have fellowship with men, Adam and Eve. But they had already disobeyed. They had fallen into sin. And that was a golden opportunity for them to confess the sin. They had already accepted. They had already agreed with the sin. They had even tried to cover up 
remember the story of that guy yesterday who tried to bandage the bruises and the <laughs> and the wounds and instead of bandaging himself he he put the bandage on the mirror now at that moment god comes and finds them and ask them where are you guys you're not at the place the closet the prayer place the place of fellowship what is going on and instead of having an opportunity to confess who they failed or oh, we failed we didn't we didn't make it adam rushes off and blames the woman and immediately the woman blames the serpent But there is something that David is pointing out the condition of the unconfessed sin if we can all realize that the fault the guilt the blame lies nowhere else but within that person it lies with you it comes to you and I it involves a single person it's it's personal And the same thing happened to King Saul. He was told, "Go destroy the Amalekites and the king and everything." He goes and he spares the fattened lambs, he spares the king. And 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 the prophet Samuel comes and asks, "What is that sound? I hear the sound of the bleating sheep." And he said, "You know, the men told me that we can spare this ones for sacrifice instead of owning up and taking the blame on himself and say the fault is man is mine the punishment is mine the wrong is mine no he blamed others and this unconfessed sin the condition of unconfessed sin and i want you to have a moment of reflection in your heart you know this that call yourself for a meeting and just do an analysis those sins that you've never confessed those things that you've never even dealt with it is because you've pointed a finger to somebody there is somebody you blame for that shortcoming for that mistake for that failure you know uh you know and you say if it was not for so and so i could have done better so david seems to have said the same thing and confessed sin it involves a single person it is all you I want to bring it across. It is you. Take responsibility. Deal with that and confess sin and say it is me. I I own up. I own up. I failed. I own up. This is in my in 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 my heart. It involves you. It involves the single person. It involves you. And because of time and uh, because of uh, I know I didn't expect that these days are going to run 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 we are almost now in day in day we are in day 3 yeah but allow me to say the other condition of the secret sin of the of the unconfessed sin it involves a secret place called the heart he says my heart if i had cherished sin in my heart So not only does the condition of unconfessed sin involves a single person but it also involves a secret place and you know David is referring to the seat of our being and our emotion it is where no one else can observe you know the heart and the place that Jeremiah described in Jeremiah 17:19 by saying the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately we can who can know it it is that place hidden from the eye of man yet i want you to know this carefully looked upon by the eye of god we are talking about the prayer closet it is the place where you shut the door and you're meeting with god so the unconfessed sin it involves you as a single person and it involves the secret place that is the heart which is the most deceitful which is hidden from the eyes of man you can hide it from the crowd yet you cannot hide it from god who you are meeting in the prayer closet yeah? so it is carefully looked upon by the eye of god and you remember when someone was preparing to anoint the next king of israel in Samuel 16 he looked upon Jesse's son Eliab and said surely the Lord has anointed he, him because he looked handsome he looked like a king and God rebuked him he told him look 
not on his countenance or on the height of his stature. You know, he was looking at the height and the looks. But God told him, no, because I have refused him. For the Lord sees not as a man sees. For he looketh, man looks on the outward appearance. But the Lord looks into the heart. So let's talk about this condition of the, of, of the unconfessed sin. You want to hide it. Hide it from us, yes. But if we are going to have success in the prayer closet, we need to know that we cannot hide from God. Huh? It, the unconfessed sin, if it's present, it is lodged in not only a single person, but in a secret place that only God sees. God can see it. God can see it. So, brethren, let's deal with this unconfessed sin. So, this is Pastor Lucy Painter with your daily insight, and this is Prayer Closet, Day 3. Shalom.